And uh, now is uh, uh, Antonio Luque. Uh, Antonio Luque is uh, professor, assistant professor in the University of Sevilla eh? and uh, president of the uh, Spanish session of the IEEE. Eh? Uh, go to explain uh, what is the uh, IEEE, your organization and uh, your mission and uh, your activities. Eh? Okay, you can pass us here. No, quieres, eh, tienes una presentación, ¿no? Sí, sí. Sí, sí. Yo invité. Ya la diste. Este sí me hace falta. Eh, ahí. Ahí es el micrófono de... Microphone. Sí. Necesitas un... Ah, te van a poner sí. el micrófono. Sorry. Como he terminado. Sí, he terminado. Tienes 25 minutos. Sí, me sobran de todo. Dame un segundo. Dame un segundo. Dame un segundo. Dame un segundo. Te voy a preguntar a los antes si quieren preguntar algo. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Miguel, for the kind uh, introduction. Thank you for inviting me to be here. And <laughs> for inviting me to be here at this 50th uh, anniversary of the National Association of uh, Telecom Professionals. I'm here uh, representing the Spain section of IEEE, which, by the way, will be also 50 years old next year. So uh, we will be celebrating the same uh, anniversary in uh, like a few months. So we are one year younger but uh, about the same age. So my uh, uh, presentation here will try to introduce what is IEEE, what are we doing uh, in this uh, not-for-profit association, and perhaps more importantly, how we can better serve the profession, how can, uh, we collaborate with uh, professionals in the telecom and other engineering industries, uh, especially in Europe. So my uh, short presentation will uh, talk about what is uh, IEEE, of course, what is the, the spine uh, section of IEEE, what do we do, uh, and then how we can have a role as a professional organization. How can we uh, serve this profession and how, uh, how you can also participate, especially we will focus in Europe and uh, in one uh, new initiative that we are developing for helping shape uh, public policy in Europe. So uh, we like to, see, to say that IEEE is the largest technical professional organization in the world, which is true, as we are having more than 400,000 members spread all over the world. I will show some figures later. Uh, and the main purpose of, uh, of this organization is to help improve, uh, let's say, innovation, technical innovation in the world. The motto is uh, advancing technology for humanity, so our idea is that if we are able to increase the, this technology, if we are able to advance this technology, we can serve humanity, we can uh, make people uh, live better lives, we can make people uh, do better things in their lives. This is the motto, this is the idea that we are pursuing, and I hope that all of us share this same idea, and uh, so we can uh, have this common objective. Yep. So we do this by uh, uh, sharing information, by creating new information, by uh, uh, let's exchanging this information among members and with the community in general, mainly uh, information about electrical and electronic engineering, about communication technology, but not only. There are other areas, there are other fields which are also part of our interest, and you can see this, uh, uh, these uh, areas listed here. So you see we are interested in aerospace, technology, in biomedical engineering, of course, in communications, nanotechnology, optics, and so on. So anything which is related to electrical and electronic uh, engineering is welcome inside IEEE. So this is a large organization. Here you have some numbers. We are now uh, more than 400,000 members, uh, divided in 38 technical societies devoted to each one of these fields that I mentioned before, and we are present today in 160 countries. Uh, the 4,000, around 4,000 members who are uh, in Spain, uh, they form what we call the Spain sections, where I, I have the honor to chair for these uh, two years. This is about the, the, the reach, the global reach that we have, but the, we also uh, have a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, technical information. We are having more than 1,000, uh, 1,300, 
conferences per year all over the world. Uh, we share more than 3 million documents right now and publish more than 170 different journals. So this is a very broad range of information which we try to make available to everyone and we hope that everyone can also uh, contribute. Uh, regarding membership, everyone is welcome to join as a member. And right now we have, uh, this is the evolution of the last 30 or 40 years. And right now we are more, as I said, more than 400, uh, 2000, 420,000 uh, members currently. So we see the evolution in the last, in the last years. These members are spread in the world and we, uh, they are divided in what we call regions in the world. Here you can see these regions and we are in Europe. Uh, yeah. Here in Europe. We are uh, inside what we call region number eight, and about eight, uh, 80,000 members belong to region number eight, which comprises uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Other parts of the world are in other uh, different regions. So this is more or less uh, uh, a presentation of what we are, but I would also like to uh, share how we can serve the profession, which is the main uh, topic of this, of this talk. For that, I would like to present a little bit of history because this is important. So, uh, this is a quite old organization. Uh, it was founded, uh, the first of, one, uh, of the two parent organizations was founded at the end of the 19th century, in 1884. The American Institute of Electrical Engineers was born with such great people, listed there, uh, very, really good inventors, and they created this organization to promote the uh, technical advance in these areas. Yep. Some years later, about 30 years later, uh, another uh, organization, the Institute of Radio Engineers, was also created to advance in the technology of radio and also the beginning of the electronics a few years, a few years later. So these uh, two organizations with different uh, fields, they found that they pursued uh, common goals so they could uh, better work together. And uh, uh, 50 years later, in 1963, they joined uh, together to form what this uh, nowadays known as IEEE. So this, uh, this is the idea. Um, the important thing here is that both organizations have had the, the, the common goal of advancing technology, of uh, promoting science and technology uh, for, for the benefit of humanity. Yep. But a few years later, uh, these two organizations born in the US, uh, the situation there was slightly different uh, at the beginning of the 70s. There was big economic downturn, which affected especially the uh, work of the engineers. And uh, for example, there was a, a decrease in the investment in aerospace uh, industry because the Apollo program finished and the, also the budget for, for NASA was very much cut. So there was uh, some problems there. And also uh, defense, which is in the US is a very uh, important uh, source of income for engineers, also was cut. So there was a different situation. And then uh, this was uh, also uh, joined by the fact that there was no national engineering association in the United States. We have these uh, engineering associations here, but they didn't have such a thing uh, in the United States. So uh, members or some members started to uh, think that maybe the organization should change its focus and not focus on uh, developing technology for the humanity or for the community, but on defending the profession and defending the members, right? Kind of National Engineering Association. So this was a proposal, but uh, most of the members didn't think that this was, uh, this was a good idea. They still think that uh, improving technology, not only for our own benefit, but for the benefit of humanity, which, uh, was a, a better idea. So this change in the IEEE constitution that had uh, th this uh, idea of first promoting the membership uh, or the interest of the members failed and it wasn't approved. So they came up with a, a different proposal than was like a mix, mixture between both. So still the first uh, goal is the scientific and educational uh, and technical, but then, the, then a second goal was also added, which is professional directed, as is written there, directed towards the advancement and standing of the members of the profession itself. This was much a better uh, solution and this was approved by a, a great majority of the members in 1973. Uh, so uh, the, the, the objectives of the association uh, changed a, a little bit. This le also led to the creation of what is now called IEEE USA, which is National Association of uh, Electrical and Electronics Engineers there in the United States and serves like a national engineering association. 
So uh, after this, after this uh, United States, after this American uh, Engineering Association was created, uh, also some things started to change in Europe, but the situation in Europe is different from the US, of course. Uh, these uh, new objectives that were uh, 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 created for the, for the organizations, uh, they included like the conduct and, and publications of surveys and reports on things which are interest, uh, to the members, interesting to the members, also collaboration with public bodies, which is very important for us uh, in Europe, establishments of standards of qualif uh, qualification and ethical conduct. But something that is uh, important is that uh, the, the, the young uh, constitution prohibits uh, collective bargaining on things like salaries or so, which are better left to other organizations. So this is not something uh, related to uh, uh, try to increase, uh, have increases in salaries or something like this. This is left to labor unions or other organizations. Uh, so we are not usually dealing with these things. But now in Europe, as I was mentioning, there uh, already existed these professional organizations, like the one that we are uh, invited here, uh, uh, and many uh, IEEE members in Europe and other parts of the world also belonged to this organization. So uh, they didn't want like uh, having two organizations pursuing the same goals. It didn't make uh, much sense, right? Also, the leaders of IEEE in Europe uh, also thought that it was not very smart to try to compete with this organization. It's better to collaborate. So this is the, the current idea, the idea that has been floating around for uh, many years. So a few years ago, we conducted a survey uh, among uh, European members, and they felt that we are uh, fulfilling many of our goals, like providing this scientific and technical organization, but maybe we are not uh, having one of these uh, things uh, already uh, fulfilled, like cooperation with European institutions and agencies. Many of the members in Europe feel that there is a lack of an organization which is able to uh, act uh, in front of European organizations, in front of European institutions, and uh, uh, let's say advise them in public policy related to technology. So this is one uh, challenge that we uh, try to uh, overtake, and uh, this is the thing that I would like to share with you, the uh, initiatives on European public policy. So public policy has always been an important part of the IEEE mission uh, in our goal of benefiting humanity by advancing technology. And there are many uh, initiatives uh, related to public policy. One of them is EPPI, uh, it's there. I will talk a little bit more later. EPPI, a European Public Policy Initiative, but it's not the only one. There is another, uh, other ones related to governance on the internet, or in Africa, or in many other places, right? Uh, and this has been a priority of the board of directors of IEEE since a few years ago. So the European Public Policy uh, Initiative, uh, it's managed by one uh, committee inside IEEE and has this, uh, well, this uh, mandate in terms of the bylaws. So uh, the idea is to be able to, uh, for the technologies to share their concerns and enable the European Union government to obtain technologies inputs in matter of importance. This is our, uh, our goal with this, uh, this initiative. So we collaborate with IEEE uh, offices in Vienna and also in Brussels, which are where most of the European uh, institutions are located. So what, how is this uh, good uh, for uh, our IEEE members in Europe, uh, especially? Uh, it, we feel that our members want to uh, participate, help shaping public policy, they want to help the profession and they want to uh, support the advances in technology uh, in this part of the world. And they can, uh, uh, we uh, also offer them the, the possibility of participating in uh, working groups in, uh, led by volunteers so that they can uh, uh, contribute to this public policy initiative. So we have a number of uh, parts in this uh, public policy initiative. We have, uh, we try to be the, uh, provide the, the way of members for being represented in front of Brussels institutions and the European Union and the European Free Trade Associations so that they are aware of the things that happen there and also have the possibility of influencing these decisions. We have a number of policy working groups where members can participate, they are open to all members which uh, have some qualifications, but open to all members. And currently we have two 
of these policy working groups, one on energy and one on ICT, on, which is probably more uh, interesting for people here. And we try to organize events, generally events, each uh, year uh, addressed to one particular technology, one particular area, and we have organized some uh, on internet governance, on green energy, on, our, on ethics and artificial intelligence, which is very a hot topic nowadays. And this year we are having one in a couple of months about technology for health. Yep. And we also participate, of course, as, as this public policy initiative in numerous other events, like one here or other ones. Yep. So these two working groups, which are, I think, a very good opportunity for members to participate, I think uh, it's, it's really important. Uh, there are two of them now, and we have 12 members per, per group. This, uh, periodically, we issue open calls so that members can uh, apply, and then they are selected by peer review, and uh, they can join these uh, working groups. We received a lot of applications for these uh, open calls, and then uh, these 12, uh, 24 people in total were selected for these uh, working groups. And here we have some of the results have, that have been produced by one of these, by the Working Group on Energy. So they, uh, they already developed the roadmap for this year and issued a number of uh, statements on policy which are uh, addressed to uh, policymakers in Europe. And also uh, we have published a number of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, documents about uh, energy in Europe. And also these ones are already published. These ones are on approval stage inside discussing uh, inside the working group and some others are uh, being developed right now. Probably most uh, of uh, more interest to you, for you is the working group on ICT. Uh, again, it uh, has developed a number of documents and a number of uh, public uh, documents. I already published the action plan for electronics industry in Europe and an action plan for uh, network neutrality, which uh, is important. Right now, they are uh, being uh, in approval stage about artificial intelligence, and these other ones are right now being developed, and still there is opportunity for participating uh, in them. Some of the things that uh, uh, have been produced uh, for, by these working groups and the European Public Policy Initiative, you, you see here the IEEE submits that I mentioned before on internet governance. You have here with Bing Surf, uh, he participated, I think this was uh, in Paris, if I remember correctly, uh, towards Secure green, green Energy, which was in Volume, and then Artificial Intelligence and Ethics, uh, I think it was somewhere in the United Kingdom, different places in Europe, and uh, as I mentioned, this year we are having this one on Technology for Health that will, will take place in November this year, uh, also in, in London, in the United Kingdom, and will address the future of healthcare uh, in relation to new technologies and emerging technologies. So I think this is a, also a really good opportunity to participate and be present there and help shaping this, uh, uh, the policy on this particular uh, technology. The, these working groups also periodically release what they call policy position statements where they express the opinion of the members and the working groups. They try to express the opinion of engineers and technologists on different aspects of public policy. So uh, uh, they try to represent these 60,000 IEEE members in Europe so that the uh, policymakers are informed on the opinion of the people working in technology about these uh, this different issues. So you see here that at a number of these uh, statements, uh, this electronics industry, electricity distribution, about smart cities, about network neutrality and some others, which are, of course, available for you to download if you go to uh, the EPPI website. So you can read these public policy statements and, uh, and participate in new ones. Also, we have produced a number of, uh, of uh, let's say, supplements to the, the Parliament magazine, which is the official magazine of the European Parliament, and we have participated, uh, I don't have the number here, but still we have participated in a number of these, so we try to reach the uh, Parliament members uh, in, in Strasbourg so that they can be informed. And this is a very good uh, opportunity of having our voice heard, the voice of the engineers and the technologists heard by the people who are making the decisions. So uh, this is uh, sent to 200 members of the European Parliament, but also they are distributed to other uh, people related to policy in different parts of Europe and the European institutions. And this is, I think this, is, this in particular is a very good uh, uh, result of the initiative. Okay, so to conclude, I don't want to uh, be very long, so 
because there is a, a break uh, just after this talk, so I don't want to be very long. My conclusion will be that a Triple E is a good opportunity for you who are involved in uh, technology, who are involved in engineering, to help improve the profession in collaboration with the national engineering associations. Uh, uh, you, can, you have the opportunity to participate in this uh, uh, improvement of the profession, and in particular, as I presented to you, in uh, recommending or helping or uh, shaping the public policy related to technology in Europe. So uh, I will be around for the rest of the day if you want to uh, comment uh, something or you would like to discuss any of these things, or maybe now if we have time, but if not, feel free to approach me and uh, if you want to be better informed about these working groups or any other activity that we are creating. Okay? Thank you very much. <laughs>